Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday. I'm talking to Keith, who is in uh, Toronto, Canada. Hey, everybody. Good to be on the show. And um, so what time is it over there? Because it's about five past eight in the UK at the moment. Yeah, it's 3.05 p.m. right here. Okay. And is it... Um, well, uh, 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 forgive me for my horrendous geography, but where is Toronto? Is it on? It's on. Is, I've got a feeling it's on the east coast. East coast. East side. It's, it's uh, close to New York. I'm just sort of right. across the lake from uh, New York. That was a lucky guest. <laughs> 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 I thought I've got fifty percent chance of getting this right. Um, That's right. So yes, as I mentioned, sort of obviously the, the 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 sort of the format is I ask. I try and ask the um, dads the same 13 questions. Uh, you don't have to answer them. You can skip them. Uh, but yeah, uh, you up for, for the first question? All right, let's have it. Brilliant. I guess, how old were you when you became a dad? Uh, yeah, I was 29. Okay. Yeah, 29 years old. Because um, it was a good time, you know, not, not too young, not too old. Um, How many have you got? I have two. Okay. Boys, seven, girls? Two girls, a seven-year-old uh, and a two-year-old. Oh, okay. Are you getting much sleep? Uh, I am. Um, I am unfortunately separated from uh, both the mothers. So uh, the one, the older one stays with me Monday to Friday. Uh, I kind of see the younger one uh, once a week. So, oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear about... Sleep, but separations but yeah this uh, life can be a, be a bit like that kind of sometimes i suppose that's how it goes <laughs> um how would you describe the experience of being a parent in three words um three words uh fantastic challenging uh emotional yeah i think that's pretty pretty fair um what question number three what was your what's your biggest regret uh, you may not have one but if you do well you know i uh, my parents separated when i was three so i mean I, at the time i did regret kind of separating uh, i really wanted to try to stay together because i didn't really want that for, for my daughter but um you know looking back now uh it was the right thing to do and uh Everyone's better for it, so I guess not really a dread as much anymore. But I did regret it for a while. Yeah, but as you said, sometimes it's what's best for everyone. You know, it, things change, and you know, it, it it's best for your kids and for you guys and your relationships better, and that's a positive thing, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. A question number four: What is one piece of advice you would want to give to your teenage self? Mm. Definitely uh, investment, you know, investing into uh, <laughs> yourself uh, fitness-wise, investing in yourself career-wise, financially, uh, at that sort of age, even just putting a little bit of money away helps to, you know, grow and, you know, touch it. I don't think uh, people are at that age are really, you know, taught or prepared, but also just yeah fitness wise is like that's sort of when you decide if you're going to be active into adulthood um you know at that sort of age so sticking with an exercise program that's going to push you into life and uh you know keep you moving keep you healthy keep you happy that's it's really important and that's so, what am, am i right in thinking that's your that's your industry that's what you you do yeah, so I'm a online personal trainer. So I help uh, people in Canada, uh, America, uh, in Europe, basically to uh, you know dads particularly to get rid of their dad bods and uh, you know have them get rad bods, right? Brilliant. Yeah. And do you um, is there a is it, I mean is there sort of an avatar a specific type of dad you 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 deal with or? Uh, just, just basically from my experience of being the dad of two, I can kind of really relate to some of the, the stresses, the, the struggles. Um, so I actually have written uh, several ebooks about some of the topics. You know, how to actually be a better dad, how to 
how dads can get better sleep, uh, you know, running, uh, being a better partner, all these sort of things that, that help uh, dads in their overall life just to become better fathers, better partners. Um, Do you yeah. ever find there are sort of similar themes of sort of barriers that dads have to fitness or certainly the dads that you've, you've come into contact with? Yeah, you know, a lot of dads, uh, they do already have this sort of negative uh, stereotype. Um, so it's sort of like, like, I feel like a lot of them have kind of already given up. They, they don't, they don't feel like there's any purpose or, you know, uh, you know, the dad bods try to become socially acceptable. But when I had one, I know I had like low energy. I didn't feel like really doing much. I, I couldn't be there for my kids fully. And it just, it, it, I think it's just sort of changed everything in my life, um, you know, for the better. So has fitness been something you've done from, for an early age or what, what was the first sort of fitness or sport you got into? Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, as a kid, you'd always you'd hide and go seek, tag, all those sort of things. And um, then generally progress into some sort of sports. Like I did a lot of soccer, track and field. Um, but then sort of when I got to university, that's sort of when, um, you know, you could become more sedentary. Uh, I started gaining weight. Uh, one, one of the girls actually noticed and uh, I started like, you know, I need a change. And so I started to do some weights. Um, my mother got a personal trainer at that time, and that's sort of just what propelled me into like, hey, that that might be a good way to to make some money. But I actually just found it really rewarding being able to help people, see them get the results, help them boost their confidence, and make them feel good. It's just it's just a great experience to yeah. To what if you could give? Um, is it is there one piece of advice you could give a dad who who might be listening who? I don't know, he feels a bit overwhelmed by the idea of getting back into fitness, maybe he hasn't done anything from school. What, what if, you, if you said, you know, what's one sort of first win you could do to sort of get you in the right direction? Yeah, it, it, it's all about those small little victories, right? If you just set yourself a small goal, and that could be something as simple as making sure you're getting enough sleep or drinking a little bit more water, um, doing going for a walk, adding something else to your routine, just something small. It doesn't have to be this whole, like, go to the gym, you know, cut out everything from your diet. Like, no, that's not going to be successful. You need to start slow and, and just enjoy the process, make it part of your lifestyle. That's what's going to get you there. Not not focusing on the end results so much. Yeah, that sounds like solid advice. Uh, question number five, what is the best job you've ever had? Best job? Well, yeah, I got to say the one that I have right now. Uh, being yeah. able to again help people it's it's just rewarding uh question number six what's the worst job you've ever had oh uh, I, I worked in a telecom uh, communications company um for uh the, the contracted at the sprint basically doing retention it was i don't know hard work it. yeah hard work and just uh the turnover uh, I realized people were just leaving that job and no one was sticking around. And the reason was is because they kind of just sort of like, they'll just sort of recycle you out because you, know, you cost them more money commission wise. It's just, so I, I kind of enjoyed doing it, but it was just unfortunate the way that they structured their company. Yeah, that does sound like a shame. Um, question number seven. Did you have a nickname at school? <laughs> uh, several. Uh they called me horse. I was like running a lot. Uh, called me keep the camper. I had a big backpack. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing that imaginative, but. No, I went to all boys high school, so they, they weren't, uh, yeah, that's clever. <laughs> what's the big, you, what's the big sport in Canada? What's like the one thing that, I mean, in England it's football. Um, but is there a what sport is kind of a, if you if there were a load of guys in a bar what is what are most people talking about? It's probably hockey here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And would um, you do you think Canadians would rather beat uh, who who is if in the what's who's the big rival? I mean, is is it obviously America? Oh yeah, yeah. There's been a big like uh, you know rivalry between America and Canada. Uh, 
Canada and Russia. Um, I mean, I'd imagine Canada, Russia has got to be pretty big because the yeah. Canadians are probably the best in the world, aren't they? Would you say? Well, yeah, uh, if not the one of the best, yeah, for sure. And we yeah. invented the sport. Yeah. What's who's your local team then? So, are they any Toronto good? Maple Leafs. Are they uh, good? Have they had a good they're, season? Um, they're in the Stanley Cup this season, but uh, they haven't won since like the very, very beginning, like you know, eighty years or something. So, people are wanting to win. People here craving it. A lot of uh, diehard Leaf fans. So, is the Stanley Cup? Is that like a, just a Canadian league, or is that American teams as well, or? Yeah, it's it's Canada and America competing together. Right. So basically, you've got all the best teams from Canada and America, and who won it last? Um, I'm not sure. I uh, I don't I don't follow it as much. That must be interesting when you get an American Canadian final. Yeah, yeah. Then it's really heated. Yeah, I bet it does. And how do they decide where the, where you play it? Surely, if you play. Well, it, how do they decide if you've got an American and a Canadian team in the final? How do they decide like where you play it? Do you play in Canada or where do they play the final match? Uh, well, it's usually like seven games, so they rotate between like alternate home away, home away, home away. I guess maybe it's a flip of the coin as well. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah, because that home advantage has got to be worth something. I would have thought. Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone's rooting for you. The energy. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's good. Um, question number eight, what's the best trick you've ever played on someone? And bear in mind, you may not have done so there's not, a, if you haven't, you haven't. No. Um, so during, the COVID, I really took up magic. And, uh, so I was doing lots of tricks, uh, back then. Um, I guess the best trick, uh, I got this flip book where you flip it, uh, says a bunch of animals and um you, you tell me when to stop stop and then in this bag that i've given you there's uh, something in there and then uh where i've stopped it says unicorn and in the bags a unicorn so i learned a couple of tricks i thought that one was one of the better ones that i uh i bet the kids like it yeah yeah i do it for the kids um yeah they always want to learn how to do it so i, I try not to tell them because the second you tell them it's Kind of kills the whole, kills the barrel, yeah. kills the magic, doesn't it? Um, question number nine: What's the best live gig you've ever been to? Uh, best live gig. Um, uh, well, you may not have done. It's not. It. I mean, gigs. Uh, not really like done gigs. I mean, I've, I've done some contract work, I guess. Um, Doing some video game design development stuff, so I had. Uh, oh, sorry. This is this is a this is a lost in translation in 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 British. So gig is like a music or a, a sporting, a yeah. Whereas I'm getting gig yeah, no. to you might mean like a work contract. Yeah, no, I haven't really done any gigs like that. <laughs> okay. Um, question number ten: What's the most important lesson you've learned so far in life? Um. Yeah. Definitely to <clears throat> ground yourself in the moment and try to be in control of your inner inner thoughts in terms of like, rather than allowing yourself to think like, oh, you're stupid. Why'd you do that? Like try to reinforce yourself to say, you know, you know, that's okay. You know, you're good. You can do better. It's like sort of just like, you know, self-love rather than self-hate. Yeah, no, I like that. Question number 11, what do you like most about being a dad? Uh, I really like the um, the progression. I like to see, um, you know, how she's grown, how she's learned new things. Uh, you know, we, we're doing rollerblading. So she's really progressed on that. And then took her on the ice skating. She's finally starting to push off. And it's just oh, like, you know, being the improvement. Uh, I really love that. And if you could give one piece of advice to uh, a first, a dad, someone who's about to become a dad, what would it be? Uh, yeah, oh, buckle up. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. definitely, uh, 
uh, yeah. it's actually a roller coaster, right? Like, yeah. but it's not, it's not anything that you're not capable of doing. Um, you're going to have times where it seems overwhelming and that's probably when things are just about to get a little bit easier. So if you just, you stick on past that, things will just start to fall into place. You'll start to, you know, um, changing diapers won't be as bad or, you know, uh, swaddling them, getting them to sleep, like all that stuff will just, you'll get better at it. And yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Certainly that I think when it's, it's like that saying, isn't it? You know, the, uh, it's darkest just before the dawn. It's kind of like, I think you do get to that point. Certainly as a parent, where you think this is so hard, whether yeah. from a lack of sleep or, you know, kids aren't getting on with each other or work stressful or at the moment money stressful. It does get better. You just, I, I think sometimes that you just, just need to breathe, maybe sleep on it. Don't make any decisions when you're tired or, you know, at the end of the day, if things do get better, I think that's probably a good way of looking at parenting. 100%. Brilliant. All right. Well, well um, so how can people get in contact with you, Keith? If, if, you know, if you got, if, if people want to get in contact with you and talk to you about per online personal training. Yeah. So best way? Um, you can find me under the trainer guide, www.thetrainerguide.ca. I'm on Instagram at the real trainer guy, uh, TikTok, at the real trainer guy, YouTube, uh, the trainer guy, and Facebook trainer guy. Great. Okay, I'll make sure that all your details are in the podcast description. Keith, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk today. Um, and yeah, that's that's you, you, you've it's been it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, you too, James. Really appreciate you having me on, and uh, really like all the work you're doing for the dads. And uh, thanks, mate. And I hope that the Maple Leaves win. Uh, we all, if you could be if you if you could be any team in the final, who would it be? Uh oh, it would have to be Montreal. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to an American team. Oh yeah, the rivalry between Toronto and Montreal goes further. Really, is Montreal <laughs> the French speaking part? Yes. Yeah. Really? So actually, that's a bigger deal than that's that really interests me actually. So so Montreal, Quebec is like the French. Canadian area, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That, do you know what? That's an insight. I would not have said that. I would have said <laughs> you want to beat an American team, but I can, I can totally see it as well. That's fair enough. Really nice to talk to you. Take care. You too, James. Bye. Bye. -bye. Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.